Your Royal Highness, there was a time in history long before the European Union when Britannia, Brittany, nowadays England, and Dacia, Dacia, nowadays Romania, were part of the same state called the Roman Empire, which spanned across three continents from the cold mists of the North Sea to the hot sands of Africa and from the Tigris and Euphrates to the Atlantic Ocean. Since then, the bonds between the people living on the banks of the river Thames and the people living on the banks of the Danube and near the Carpathian Mountains endured, continued, were interrupted and resumed time and again despite the geographical distance leading to a better mutual acquaintance. The English people have always served as a model of a Western European nation and have provided to other nations with community organizing standards from the monarchy and democratic leadership to the structures of universities, the ones in Cambridge and Oxford constitute genuine global reference points. The former structure of medieval universities had endured in certain aspects despite accelerated modernization to those days. Hence, our university, founded in 1581 by royal decree and then re-established several times, is the oldest and the most prestigious in Romania. Throughout time, students were taught in Latin, in German, in Hungarian, and Romanian. Today, we have a university with three official languages of study, Romanian, Hungarian, and German, the languages of the three main nationalities, historically speaking, in Transylvania, as well as with tens of programs taught in English and French. Many students from the European Union and from all, all over the world study here, and each and everyone is free to choose the language they are to be taught in. Furthermore, Babes Boyoy is the only university in Europe with four faculty of Christian theology in accordance to the main historical denominations of Transylvania, Orthodox or Greek Orthodox, Roman Catholic, Protestant, and Greek Catholic. In other words, the entire multicultural, multi-ethnic, and multi-denominational tradition of the region is being honored. Among the personalities that preceded you in receiving the honorary title here are famous scholars, Nobel Prize winners, monarchs, heads of state and government, such as Mario Vargas Llosa, Chancellor Angela Merkel, King Michael I of Romania, Pope Benedict XVI, Bartolomeo I, the Ecumenical Patriarch, Bronislav Geremek, Jacques Le Goff, Hans Adam II, Prince of Liechtenstein, and many, many others. Distinguished audience, His Royal Highness Charles, Prince of Wales, is part of a revered European royal family with medieval ancestry. As heir of the throne, the main responsibility of Prince Charles 
is to support her majesty the queen as a focalising element of national pride of unity and faith maintaining solidarity within the society representing stability and continuity as well as the importance of public service and of honorary office. All these are to be accomplished by permanent encouragement and self-example. The prince began his academic edu education in 1967 in Cambridge at the famous Trinity College specializing in the field of archaeology, anthropology, and history, a fact that perhaps explains His Royal Highness' special taste for monuments, for preserving the past, for all tradition of Europe. Before being officially invested as Prince of Wales, in 1969, he studied for a semester at University College of Wales, learning Welsh. In 1970, the prince became a member of the House of Lords, then a pilot in the Royal Air Force, graduate of a Royal Naval College, and commander in the Royal Navy, helicopter pilot, etc., during the last 40 years, as a heir of the throne, the prince has visited around 100 countries, fulfilling some 60 royal duties every year. He is often presented as a promoter, a world leader in the social corporate work, having provided from an early age the benefits of organic agriculture finding ways to support the unemployed youth, the, youth the young people with no education or other forms of training. His Royal Highness spoke for the first time about the environment in 1968, and he gave warnings long ago of the irreversible effects of climate change. As a leader in environment protection for over four decades, he has worked with the business environment, with charity organizations, with governments and other entities to promote sustainable ways of life and work. In 1998, Prince Charles made his first visit to Romania it was the second time in history when a Prince of Wales was officially stepping on Romanian ground. His predecessor had been Edward, the future King of Great Britain and Emperor of India, who, in 1888, had spent one day in Bucharest and several days in the royal castle of Pelesh, the summer residence of King Charles I of Romania and of Queen Elizabeth. The future King Edward VII then carried his journey through wild Carpathia by train to Gheorgheni in Transylvania where he met with the Crown Prince Rudolf of Habsburg of Austria-Hungary. Beginning with 1998, Prince Charles was visited Romania on countless occasions during either private or public visits, always informing the world of the country between the Carpathian Mountains and the Danube that is blessed by God Almighty among all places on earth. By means of properties, foundations and associations by encouraging investments and competition through the interest shown in monument restoration and environment protection, but especially leading by example, the Prince of Wales 
became a true protector of transylvania and naturally of the whole country called romania from with from viscri in the center of historical transylvania up to sapunta in the heart of the historical land of maramures with the help of his foundation of other organizations foundations and associations but mostly thanks to the warm people surrounding him and caring for him his royal highness leaves perennial seals for the conservation of historical tradition and untainted nature these traditions come from the past and look toward the future with his sensibility for history and architecture with his noticeable in his early years as a student prince charles has understood from the very beginning the role of romania as a synthesis of civilizations unification of the catholic and protestant west with the byzantine and orthodox east that is why in transylvania next to a sharp to, to the sharp towers of the gothic churches which pierce the sky there are rounded domes of byzantine churches just as a few hundred meters away from a baroque building there is a renaissance chapel next to an austere unitarian praying ground there is a synagogue while a few steps away there is a wooden church all these are symbols of the evolution of the whole european civilization perhaps better preserved here than in other parts of the old continent for this reason maybe his royal highness considers it a precious treasure which must be kept in his role as keeper of people's life and the good products of their work prince charles is a true founder reconciling nature with history faith uh, reconciling uh, nature with history faith with architecture modernity with monuments of the past byzantine romanians catholic calvinist and unitarian hungarians catholic and lutheran germans jews and other have all works toward the same purpose creating thus a model for european coexistence beyond the inherent disputes and misunderstandings you royal highness you are today in this city of cluj napoca kolozhvar klausenburg romania's second largest city capital of a province during the roman empire as london londinium was once upon a time and this city was proclaimed city some 1900 years ago the city of today has around 400000 inhabitants among whom almost 100 students are enrolled in the 10th university of this city so the university in this city is a brand in time we have learned to live together to survive but also to coexist at the university we find each other side by side to serve education research communication and dialogue we sincerely believe that through culture we may reach freedom your royal highness here in romania you find yourself at home and we hope you may always do so the reasons are both objective and subjective countless ties connect you to this country including distant relatives from the dynasty of walachia more precisely prince vlad cepesh 
or Vlad Dracula, or closer relatives descending from Queen Maria, granddaughter of Queen Victoria of Great Britain, whose bust keeps vigil on the whole way of this university. But there are also effective ties. The love for the places and the people, the row of hills and valleys this country has, the meadows covered by flowers, the forests and the rivers that are still inhabited by wild animals and fish, but mostly the hospitable people as you yourself have often mentioned. The Senate of our university has fulfilled an honorable duty to celebrate you and bring you closer to us. We rest assured that you share the motto of this institution, Traditio Nostra Una Cum Europe Virtutibus Splendet, our tradition glows together with the virtues of Europe, we consider you the successor of our founders from a century ago, when King Ferdinand of Romania and Queen Maria, Queen Maria of Romania, great aunt of your Royal Highness, refounded this venerable institution in the Kingdom of Romania. By accepting our joint invitation made by Senatus Academicus et Rector Magnificus, you have honored and dignified us, offering us trust in the strength of tradition facing the future, hoping you remain in good health and strength to serve the British nation and the world, Universitas Magistrorum et Scholarium Alme Mater Napocensis, wish you, as in times past, vivat, crescat, floreat. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, dear guests, now I invite Father Professor Ioan Kirilla, the President of the Senate of this University, to read the proclamatio, proclamatio for awarding the honorary title by the University Senate. Nos Magnificus Rector, Clarissimus Presses, Neg Non Senatus, Alme Matris Claudio Politane Universitatis Collegium, Sue Regali Censitudini, Carlo Filippo Arturo Giorgio Teregalorum in Magne Britanniae et Septentrionalis Hibernie Unito Regno Principi, Dum Observamus et Existimamus sui regalis, celistitudinis te regalorum principis magni momenti, ad daco romanorum culture patrimonius avgendum, nec non ad historicos pluriculturales valores promovendus, et ad daco romanorum spirituale atque naturale, medium inter exteras nationis cognoscendum, de nicve ad cooperationem inter magne Britanniae et septentrionalis Hibernie unitum regnum, ac daco Romanae republicam consolidandam contributionem, titulum honoris causa doctoris e idem sui regali celsitudini conferimus, in cuius rei fidem hoc diploma propriis manibus subscriptum, et nostre universitatis sigilium unitum sui celsitudini confere curamus, datum Claudiopoli quatras calendas iunias anno domini bilesimo decimo septimo. Magnificus rector Johannes Aurelius 
Romania Academie Sodalis Pop, Clarissimus Senatus Preses, Reverendissimus Pater Professor Dr. Ioannes Chirila. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give the floor to His Royal Highness Prince Charles in order to present his response. Please, Your Highness. Domnule Rector, Domnelor și Domnilor, sunt profund mișcat și foarte recunoscător pentru Maria și deosebită onoare pe care mi-o faceți un acasta, acasta amiaza. To have a, a doctorate uh, bestowed on me by the oldest university in Romania not to say one of the most prestigious in Europe, is very flattering indeed, and I shall treasure this association with your university into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now almost exactly 20 years since my first visit to this part of your wonderful country, back in 1997. And in the intervening period, I have managed to travel to other parts of Romania, but that first visit to Transylvania made an indelible impression on me. I saw a hilly, wooded, and fertile landscape still cared for by the small-scale farming communities that created them, and an extraordinary cultural continuity. In many villages, the Family names are closely associated historically with these places. The same families have been caring for the land for hundreds of years. I can only say that uh, since that visit, I have grown to appreciate and to love these landscapes and communities more and more. It is rare, perhaps unique uh, in Europe, to find well-preserved and functional, productive landscapes at such a large scale. I was astonished to find how the grasslands are so wonderfully uh, rich in wildflowers and also in butterflies, with over 200 butterfly species in Romania, compared to only 40 uh, in the United Kingdom. Other invertebrates and vertebrates, including important wolf, bear, and raptor populations. These species all indicate the overall health of the whole ecology of these landscapes. And yet they are very productive. Studies carried out by the European Union show that smaller scale farms in Romania and more widely in Europe are actually twice as productive per hectare than larger scale farms. These special producers are farming with nature, but they do need help to obtain a proper value for what they make, 
and a proper connection to the market. Given a, an integrated approach to rural development, these problems can be solved. And if they are, the communities will continue to prosper and to protect wildlife-friendly farming. All of us in the wider world have a lot to learn from Transylvania's farmed landscapes. They have spiritual as well as social, economic, and ecological significance. Does this matter in today's more cynical age when there is such an obsession with efficiency and convenience? Yes, it does, because the essential point is that in these landscapes, man is still living in harmony with nature, a harmony that has been largely lost in most parts of Europe and with disastrous results to our environment. Here, man produces food in a truly sustainable way without destroying nature or fighting nature, but in partnership with nature. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is an important theme that I've been trying to stress for many years to a chorus of skepticism. However, it would seem that the tide is beginning to turn and more and more people can see the costs of the industrialization of landscapes and food production with a loss of the natural capital that sustains us all. Short-term gains will be followed by the collapse of natural systems to in the longer term. And this is a collapse that can already be seen. In contrast, the Transylvanian farm landscapes offer many models of sustainable living, food production, and biodiversity conservation. Conventional nature reserves are probably not the answer to saving these special places for posterity, which require an holistic landscape scale approach that avoids creating islands of diversity surrounded by damaged lands. The existing richness of animal and plant life, certainly by comparison with other countries in Europe, demonstrates that farming and biodiversity can indeed survive together to enhance and complement each other. Now, there is no doubt that grassland is central to this farm landscape. A long history and continuation of traditional non-intensive management practices, mixed farming, uh, little or no fertilizer input, and low stocking densities, has allowed the great diversity of wildflowers and wildlife to survive. These low input, permanent grasslands still possess an abundance of wild plants and animals that have disappeared from much of the rest of Europe. And as you know far better than me, they yield mil meat, milk and cheese and other commercial products such as honey, wild fruits and medicinal plants and so on and so forth. It is, ladies and gentlemen, a buffered, productive ecosystem. The diversity of grasses and wildflowers, including numerous orchids, wild sages and other mint relatives, and 20 to 30 or more clovers, trefoils, vetches and other legumes, provides quality feed for farm animals. These grasslands represent more or less intact traditionally managed ecosystems, including soils and soil microflora. Pockets of dry steppe grassland on south-facing slopes and the steep hummocks or movile that are a feature of the Saxon villages and damp grassland in valley bottoms with a rich wet meadow flora are especially rich. They maintain a wealth of diversity and the goods and services of a healthy and stable environment. They reduce or prevent soil erosion. They lock up carbon and they soak up rain and slowly release clean water into wells, streams and rivers, 
providing both flood prevention in wet conditions and a secure water supply in dry periods. The whole mosaic of wildflower-rich grasslands and adjacent ancient woodlands generate income from tourism, being ideally suited to activities such as mountain bike trails, horse riding, walking, painting, and natural history. Food products from this most healthy environment of high quality with a distinct regional identity will increasingly attract consumers prepared to pay premium, premium prices. Honey and jams made locally from wild meadow and woodland edge fruits are quite literally bottled biodiversity. These farm landscapes and the villages that support them are at the very heart of Romania's rural economy and culture. Nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, this valuable ecosystem and its wild plants and wildlife are every bit as threatened as any in the modern world, even if the whole system appears substantially intact. The impressive legacy of the historical Romanian, Saxon, and secular farming communities should surely be integral to future economic growth. And conservationists can help local people and nature by showing how to combine the best traditional farming practices with innovative technology. At the end of the day, it would be a complete tragedy to lose that intangible sense of place which can happen all too easily. Instead, I cannot help feeling it is vital to ensure that an enhanced rural economy can again provide a good livelihood and one linked directly to the landscape for farming communities in Transylvania and in a countryside that combines natural beauty and a living, productive ecosystem. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked many times why I come so often uh, to Romania. What is it that makes it so special, so attractive? For me, the answer is clear. You, my Romanian friends, your natural and cultural landscape, your traditions, but also your capacity to innovate and change what you are after centuries of history, your identity and what you can do, the energy of change you can mobilize. This is what makes you special in the world. Your architecture, your beautiful farmland, your biodiversity, your pastures, meadows and orchards the mosaic of habitats and the diversity of your communities and traditions in Transylvania and across Romania, all these together are a treasure, your treasure to the world. It seems to me that sometimes you are not fully aware of all, of all this. It, it is easy to forget, lured by the rhythm and challenges of our modern society, so when you are looking to the future, please keep these values in mind. They are unique. When you want to modernize, to change, to transform, and Romania has so many things to do to change, to modernize, I do so hope that you will be able to do it in a way that would give more value to your treasure, that will preserve your communities and your landscapes, that would bring what you are already into what you want to become. I'm always amazed, ladies and gentlemen, by the exceptional creativity of your youth in IT, research and innovation, creative arts. This is part of your treasure as well. Your brand as a country is precisely this blend of values and authentic traditions the architecture, the taste of your food, the ancestral fabric of your communities, the unique biodiversity of the landscapes, as well as your capacity to innovate. This is what makes you special. 
And this is why I always return to Romania, and this is why a part of my soul is always here. Ladies and gentlemen, modern life does not mean to forget the values of the past and to replace everything with new things, but to combine in a smart way the fundamental values of our cultures and traditions with innovation and new technologies without, without severing the bond between human society and nature. Romania has a fascinatingly diverse and ancient history inherited from the Dacians and on which to build a life based on a harmonious relationship with nature. During previous centuries, other civilizations enriched the local ones, the local one with cultures, traditions, and architecture based on the same principle of respect for a harmonious relationship with nature. This is a richness which could be an asset for modern Romania. It, it would be wonderful indeed if schools and universities in Romania could cultivate the idea that nature and living traditions are an asset for modern life. That is the only way to build a sustainable material and spiritual future. And one, ladies and gentlemen, in which Romania would be uniquely placed to innovate without ever losing her precious soul. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are facing, as you noticed, an outstanding moment of the history of this university today. And again, as you noticed, we are trying to bring from the end of Middle Ages and from the early modern times some traditions, some customs, in order to celebrate distinguished personalities of this place and of Europe, including Great Britain. But speaking about the past, we need to face the future. And I would like to add that we have very close ties with British universities going back in history since 18th century. In this very moment, we signed agreements with 16 British universities, including the first MBA, Master uh, of um, Business Administration, organized with the University of Hull, with professors coming from Great Britain and with British diplomas for those able to attend and to pass all exams in this field. We are so happy to cooperate and to be witness of this glory of education, of universities, and very happy as historians to teach the history of British people who was able to expand all over the world and to bring the European pattern all over the world, everywhere, as a winning model of life and of organizing society. 
That is why I am here to thank you so much for this ceremony, for accepting this honorary degree and for being such a good ambassador of Romania, of Transylvania, of Romanian, Saxon, secular, Hungarian, Romanian culture and civilization in this land of Romania. Thank you so much.